My name is Lady LaFay, and I'm building an off-grid log home in Western Maine with my family. In this video, we're going partridge hunting. The ruffed grouse is a game bird local to the region of North America and Canada. They are typically brown with a reddish or grayish phenotype. In New England, the local term for them is partridge, even though the ruffed grouse is technically not a member of the partridge family. These birds are delicious and each breast contains about 22 grams of protein and less than one gram of fat. Ruffed grouse are well known for the sonic boom created by their wings when they flush, AKA fly away. They use the sonic boom effect to drum in order to attract mates and establish territory. Instead of a bird song, they use the sonic beating of their wings. If you're ever in the forest and it sounds like someone is trying and failing to start a lawnmower off in the distance, then it could be a partridge. These birds like a habitat of dense forests with frequent clearings. They like to wake up and eat a big breakfast of ferns, maple seeds, and other vegetation, then go find a quiet and safe bush to slowly digest. They also enjoy clearings to sun their feathers and are often found right on the edge of the forest where they can easily run or fly to safety in case a predator shows up. Hunting season for ruffed grouse in Maine begins at the end of September and goes until the end of the year, and the bag limit and possession limit makes it feasible to replace your store-bought poultry diet with these delicious wild-caught birds during their hunting season. In the fall, the birds become very active and seem to just appear out of nowhere. I can hike all summer and barely see them, but in the fall it seems like there's a bird flushing every 50 feet. Bibaco, we got one! You found him! You found him! You found the partridge! Let's go get him together! Oh, there's a second one. You found him. You found him. We're going to go get him together now. They stick around in the wintertime instead of flying south with the migratory birds, and they will actually dive into the snow and use their powerful wings to tunnel through until they find a cozy spot to sleep while being insulated by snow. Once I was deer hunting in November and sat on a rock to eat a sandwich. Unbeknownst to me, there was a sleeping partridge in the snow. I tumbled off the rock and tossed my sandwich in the snow. Most grouse hunters can relate to this story of being spooked by the sonic boom of their wings. The Algonquin word for this bird roughly translates to bad bird, and I honestly wonder if this is the reason. Partridge hunting was the first type of game that I started with way back in middle school. I learned to hunt about 40 miles from here over by a different lake, and although I got to enjoy a bird hunting camping adventure in 2021, it was only for two days and I only saw one bird. We've been to a few different places by now and we haven't put up any birds. This year, I got the proper tent set up and changed jobs, so I was able to spend the entire fall season up at camp. A lot of people hunt partridge via the rubataya hunting method, which is driving around in your truck on logging roads and hoping to see a bird sunning its feathers in the middle of the road. Rubber tire hunting might seem ridiculous, but since the birds love hanging out on the edge of logging roads, it's actually a pretty good hunting method just not as fun as exploring the forest. I'm sure that someday, when I'm celebrating my 50th hunting anniversary, that my forest exploring won't be what it is now, and rubber tire hunting might be the only way that I can do it. When it comes to picking a strategic location for partridge hunting, I'm sure you could pull out a satellite photo map and choose areas of dense forest with frequent clearings, lots of cover, and lots of food. But I found that when I go exploring and I find one of those really special, really beautiful places, that nature seems to think so too. I've had many years when I was lucky to see even two birds during the few days I could manage to take off work and go hunting. But coming home with game isn't the only reason why I hunt. I hunt because I crave the magic that can only be found when you're roaming off-grid in a wild forest. 
If that forest gives me the gift of a successful hunt, then I'm over the moon. But it's about connecting with nature, not about how many points you score or anything like that. We are so thankful to this forest for all the amazing adventures and memories that grow there. A lot of people think that you need to have a hunting dog in order to be successful at grouse hunting. This is simply not true, but a well-trained dog does add to the adventure. I only got my dog in 2020 and she's still not fully trained. Before that, I kept my eyes and ears open and target practicing year round is important for your aim and reflexes, regardless of whether or not you have an adventure pup with you. You can always retrieve the birds yourself. Hey, that's dad's bird. Hey, it's not yours. Although it's a little harder to find the highly camouflaged birds and move through the dense brush that they're often in. My dog is a pro at finding and retrieving the birds, but sometimes she wants me to chase her for the bird because she thinks it's a game of keep away. So until she learns whose bird it is, I'm having her do retrieves on leash. I have a Norwegian elk hound. Most Americans think that she's a husky and make comments about how she's not a hunting dog because she's not a spaniel or a lab. Elk hounds were bred for tracking big game through the rugged terrain of Norway and are one of the oldest dog breeds in the world, dating back to 5000 BC. They are the perfect wilderness companion for this type of terrain and weather. They are smart, and even though they were bred for hunting moose and bears, mine is just as happy tracking down grouse if it gets her a piece of cheese. In the past year, I've been working hard on her off-leash skills, since they can be known to run off and leave their human in the dust. However, after we encountered a bear and she chased it off, and uh, took her sweet time returning, I decided it would be safer to keep her leashed to my belt until we did some more training on recall with intense distractions. I'm glad she chased the bear away, but she was intent on running all the way to Canada, I think. If you're watching this video and are thinking of letting your dog off leash in the big woods of Maine, I recommend making the investment for a long range GPS collar tracking system. Vibica and I have done some training with a rubber dummy and some tail feathers taped to it, but I wasn't sure she'd be able to stay focused on the proper scent. Since most hunting only happens in the autumn season up here in New England, she spends most of the year tracking down bones and antlers. Elk hounds are smart, so you can teach them to go find the antler or go find the partridge. I hadn't frozen any wings from the year before, so I was worried about her getting the scent right. Fortunately, one morning we were going for our pre-hunting stroll through the neighborhood, I guess you could call the collection of camps along the lakeshore neighborhood, and we flushed grouse like every 20 feet. She got a big sniff of what they smell like, saw my excitement, and figured out right then and there that she was going to get to eat a whole package of Vermont Cabot cheese. I drove the logging roads until I got to the spot an overgrown logging road that stretched on for a couple of miles before petering out into a field, and then a short path to the lakeshore. I was hunting solo that day and had slept in through the brisk fall morning. Fortunately, these birds don't really come out till the sun does, so it's not the kind of hunting that requires a 4 a.m. wake up. Vibica and I walked slowly, scanning the areas for any movement. About halfway down the road, I heard a rustling and Vivica went laser-focused stare on a shrub in the woods. I saw a bird walk out and took my first shot of the season, and I didn't miss. Vivica, we got one! You found him! You found him! You found the partridge! Let's go get him together! Oh, there's a second one. We ran to the woods to retrieve the bird, on leash, and there were partridge flushing everywhere. There must have been a dozen birds in there. A faster hunter would have reloaded or at least taken the second shot, but I was way too excited to even just have one bird at the beginning of the day. And Vivica got her cheese. I put up a few more birds that were too fast for me, and me and my dog continued our adventure that day. I even saw a snowshoe hare, but unfortunately missed it as it dodged back into the tall grasses. I kept following the road until it cut through the forest 
a narrow dirt path beneath the autumn canopy. Sometimes getting lost is where you need to go in order to find the place you're looking for. This was definitely the place that I was looking for. The next day, my dad came up and he got a bird, one of the first he's gotten in a couple of years, and we also spent some time in this beautiful place. This is what hunting is about, spending time with family, going on adventures, and experiencing these magnificent places. I don't record every day I go out hunting, so there are many more bird hunting adventures that are captured in my heart, but not my camera. If you're interested in hunting ruffed grouse, drop any questions you have below. And if you're already a partridge hunter, let's share some tips and magical stories that you've had below in the comments. Please subscribe to my channel so we can share the love of the outdoors. Thanks for watching.